this week's household huddle. Before we start this week's huddle, I want to say thank you to all of our friends for sharing their pictures of the snowflakes that they made last week. job everyone. Okay, now before we jump into this week's story, let's take a minute to remember the four steps in a household huddle. Do you remember what they are? Breathe. So first we take a deep breath because taking a deep breath helps us to slow down a little and to be fully present where we are. Share. Then we share with one another, sharing a high and a low, or a joy and a concern. And this is when we not only get a chance to share, but we also get a chance to listen to one another. It's also during our share time that we get to share the story from the week. Reflect. During Reflect, we take some time to think about the story maybe thinking about what the story says to us or how it connects to our lives. Sometimes we also reflect by doing an activity together. Thank. And finally, we thank. Sometimes we thank someone in our household huddle for something that they've done. And sometimes we thank God for something that we've experienced in our lives. It's that easy. Okay, my friends, so today we light our third Advent candle. This time, the pink one. But before we do that, do you remember what our first two candle words were? Yes, they were hope and peace. Well, this week's candle word starts with the letter J. I'll give you a hint. It's not jelly beans, or jaguar, or jingle bells. Do you know what it is? Yes, today's Advent word is joy. So let's light our candle of joy. Okay, now have you ever wondered why the third candle is always pink and not purple like the other ones? Well, that's because during Advent, if you remember, it's our job to wait. And sometimes waiting is hard, especially if we're excited about what's coming next. Well, the pink candle reminds us that even when we're waiting, we're supposed to be happy and filled with joy. Now, sometimes the pink candle is called the Gaudete candle. That's a fun word to say, isn't it? Can you say Gaudete? Gaudete. Because Gaudete in Latin, which is a really old language, means rejoice. So on the third week of Advent, we think about all the things that make us rejoice and that bring us joy. Can you think of something that brings you joy? Wow, I guess there are lots of different things that fill us with joy. Well, in the Christmas story, we hear about lots of people that are filled with joy. 
When Mary finds out that God has chosen her to have baby Jesus, she is filled with so much joy that she sings out loud. And the song that she sings is called the Magnificat. Can you say Magnificat? Magnificat. She sings, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Then Mary goes on to thank God for choosing her to bring baby Jesus into the world. The angels appear to people over and over again in the Christmas story and they are filled with joy because they are excited to share the good news of Jesus. The shepherds, even though they're afraid at first when they see the angels, run to see the baby. And then scripture says, they returned glorifying and praising God for all that they had seen and heard. They were so filled with joy that they couldn't hold it in anymore. And they went out to tell everyone about what they had seen. And the wise men from the East, they had traveled so far to see baby Jesus that scripture says when they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. Can you imagine how excited they must have been? After all, they traveled a long way to find baby Jesus. And when the star stopped in the sky, they knew that they had found him. And out of their joy, they presented their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. I wonder, did you notice that each person that we just talked about was filled with joy because they found Jesus? They were so excited that their lives were changed forever. And they couldn't help but tell other people what they'd seen and heard. Wait a minute. That's kind of like us too, isn't it? We wait during the season of Advent, lighting our candles and getting ready for Jesus to come. Then on Christmas, we are so filled with joy that we sing songs, give gifts, and share the story of Jesus. Just like Mary and the angels and the shepherds and the wise men did. I guess we're not any different than they were. And our joy and their joy isn't either. Okay, so a few things you might want to talk to your huddle about. Which people in the Christmas story are your favorite? What brings you joy? And how could you share Christmas joy with others? Great job, everyone. Hooray! Okay, if you're looking to do an activity with your household huddle, how about playing a few minute to win it games? All you need is a plastic cup and some jingle bells. First, place the plastic cup a short distance away and see how many jingle bells you can toss into the cup in one minute. You might want to put something like a little rock in the bottom of the cup to weigh it down so it doesn't fall over.
Then try laying the cup down on its side and see how many jingle bells you can roll into it in one minute. That one might be a little bit harder than you think. You can also use your imagination and think of new jingle bell challenges for your household huddle. As always, just be creative and have fun. Well, my friends, we always end our household huddles with a thank you. And this week, I'd like to thank Kaylee, Corey, and Sophie for sharing their laughter and joy in our household huddle videos. Friends, thank you to all of you for joining us today, and I hope you enjoy your household huddles this week. Remember, household huddle can happen anytime and anywhere, so just be creative. But no matter where you are or what you're doing, remember that you are amazing. And don't ever forget that God loves you just the way you are, and so do I. If you'd like to share a picture of your Jingle Bell challenges to be a part of next week's Household Huddle video, you can email them to Pastor Kelly at oldtownucc.org. <laughs>